Hello everybody, I'm Daryl with West Coast Classic Cougar and in another episode of informative restoration techniques and hints, today we're going to show you how to take a 1967 through 1970 door panel. It's rather shabby, very warped, water damaged on the back, and generally just doesn't fit at all. We're going to turn it into this. How about that? Nice new shiny belt line trim strip nice backer panel, and a few accessories to boot to polish up the interior of the car a little bit. As you can see, this is the original panel that came off the restored door panel. Um, it's a little worse for wear. They also had kind of a design flaw on the earlier panels where they ran the holes for the panel inserts, which we sell reproduction. They ran them horizontally instead of vertically. What happens is they tear out really easy because they're too close down towards the edge. As you can see on the reproduction panels, they actually insert this way and they sit up higher, thus you have more material to be able to work with so that they don't tear out. Uh, this panel will work on four different years from 67 through 70 Mercury Cougar. There are different areas that you cut out. What we've done is used modified staples to be able to make it super strong to put the backing on. I've taken uh, conventional T50 arrow staples, cut them down and re-fastened it. It's also glued. I'll show you how to get to that in just a few minutes. On the old panel, what you'll see when you take your panels off is usually the felt strip, also called a belt line trim kit. These are usually deteriorated. What we have are replacement belt line strips. These go in with staples on the back side, direct replacement. We carry them for all the series from 1967 through 1973 Cougar. When you receive your panels, you're going to get a matching set of left and right panels. You're also going to get what are called alignment bolts and nuts for it. These are used to realign with these holes up here, the panel to the metal backing that's arched. This is what gives your door panel support where you rest your arm on it at. We're going to destroy this essentially, take this old panel off. We're going to straighten out the pins that are on the metal and we're going to repress it in a vise. First thing we want to do is remove all of the old rusty staples out of the back of the board that surround it. We're also going to remove and cut the staples off the inside of the belt line trim strip. And then we'll commence to scrub it down and clean it, make it all pretty. Then we'll rebuild it. You have to be very careful not to stab yourself. Oh wait, I almost forgot. Eye protection. Considering it is metal and I don't want it in my eye, I think I'll take heat and use a little protection. Start it with a pick, pull it up, drop it. The next step for removal of the backer panel, we've got all of the staples out. Next what we have to do is flip the panel up very carefully and inside here, you're going to see staples. These staples are of a large gauge. You can try to take them out with a needle nose, set of pliers, it's not going to happen. What you're going to need is either a Dremel or an air cutting tool. We're going to use a Dremel, simpler, most of you have them, a little bit easier to work with. Staple. Next step, remove the belt line. Try not to deform the metal behind it, the substructure, or you just have to beat it back out with a hammer later. You also want to take care not to cut into the vinyl that wraps over the door frame because you're going to need to rewrap that and you want the holes to realign back in the original spot on the vinyl. Let me take it out. So. Belt line kit. The top of the panels and over the side are glued. What we're going to want to use is something very soft. 
like this, not one of these. That will allow us to peel back and kind of slice the old glue out of there. Just want to continue down. There's also foam. It's a multi-layered panel. It has not only vinyl on it, it also has a foam layer. Now the foam, I don't know any other way to do it other than just to pull it off carefully. From the factory, they overlapped all the vinyl and they glued it down. This is all glue that you see. You want to pull this back apart. There's the glue. Just basically contact cement. Start working your way down. And cut the foam back and out. Taking care, of course, to not cut into your panel. Now, a lot of these panels are, well, in this case, 46 years old. These have had a lot of sunlight on them. They've deteriorated a lot. Sometimes they're hard as a rock. You can still bring it back and make it look really nice. They don't reproduce these panels, so you're kind of at the mercy of what you've got to work with sometimes. Don't worry. I know this is boring, but you'll enjoy the next step. This has perimeter glue on it as well. Looks just like this on the other side. What we want to do is the same thing. With this, I would work, get underneath inside the panel and pull up. And that's going to release the glue. Or in this case, it's so deteriorated that the panel is going to fall apart and we'll just have to pick it out later. The other thing you want to do is right here is your grommet for your lock knob. Take a pair of pliers and on the inside are two tabs. Carefully straighten the tabs and the grommet will pop out. Now, old nasty grommet, I have somewhere around here, there's a nice shiny new grommet. These grommets also have the felt on the inside which keeps the lock knob from rattling around inside the panel. Quite nice. Okay, back to the panel. I'm going to turn this around so you can see what's going on here. And essentially, we're going to peel the panel out. And what you see here is door panel and the separated vinyl. Now the vinyl on this is in pretty good shape. You can see there's a paper backing. It's been lightly sprayed with a contact glue gun from the factory. It comes down, it stops at this point, and then there's a foam fabric. The next step will be to remove this from this. You can see the holes here. You can see some rust on it. We're going to clean that up and make it look really nice. This is the messy part. What they did from the factory is these pieces of metal have been pushed through with a die press and they have four fingers on them. They in turn pushed it into the backer board. So what we're going to do is reverse the process. We're going to peel the backer board off the substructure. We're going to straighten out the fingers and then we're going to go over to our vise. We're going to press them back in and realign it. Works pretty cool actually. At this point, simply remove the backer board however you need to. Whatever works. Doesn't really matter. The main thing is don't bend this because once you reassemble the panel, if this has bends in it, you're going to see it and you're going to wish that you had kept it straight. So all I'm doing is basically trying not to bend the panel and it's not cooperating. Ooh. Let's see, this isn't fair. You guys all get instructions. I don't have any instructions. I got to wing it. Sometimes it's fun to destroy stuff around here. Voila. Some cool things about these panels. If you ever see a set of panels and you're wondering what year they are, a lot of times they have this little date stamp on them. And that's a quality control stamp as well as a date on it. Kind of neat. All right, on to the next part. Got the old panel gone. We're going to pitch it over there for now. Next step. Preparation of the metal substructure. As you can see here, what they've done is they pressed them in and flared out four little triangulated teeth. Looks like little shark teeth. They're actually pretty sharp. What we're going to do, take a needle nose, straighten these back up. Then we can take it over to the vise and press this onto the new panel.
Pretty simple, really. Just take them carefully. Straighten them. Try not to get your fingers in there because it will indeed hurt. All right, that's the last one. We have all of these pushed back up and we're gonna have to do a little bit of straightening. It's not quite straight. We'll do that on the vise before we press it out. The next thing we wanna do is get all the rust off. It's uh, not rusted through, but it's definitely seen its day of moisture. We'll do both sides, do that in the media blaster, bring it back, get it over to the vise, straighten the piece out, get it prepped and ready to hear the new panel on. At the same time, we'll go ahead and punch out this, which is for the courtesy light on the 6768. This needs to be taken out. All right, let's take a look and see what we have. Well, that looks pretty good. Nice smooth transition. These panels are indeed arched. Uh, it's not a straight piece. Uh, the glue that's on it, you can use something like Goo Gone, remove it with. You can also prime and paint this if you want. Also wanted to show those original holes from the original Beltline strip. We're gonna reuse these for alignment for the vinyl cover, and then we're gonna drill and make new holes for the new Beltline strip. The next step, is to take the two supplied bolts and the two supplied nuts, put these through. Make sure you get the right panel in the right spot because once you press this together, you're probably not gonna get it back apart. Okay, like so. Take the nuts, just apply them loosely. Don't tighten them up too much quite yet. You want a little bit of flexibility on this when you go to press these in. As you can see, it kind of just bonds it together temporarily. Now we're going to take it over to the vise and we're going to clamp all this back together. What I like to do on these is start near the first bolt. Just take and press it in. Go ahead and cinch it down until there's no gap here. Go ahead out to the outboard side. Just continue in this direction. Press it. You can come back in and fill in some of the gaps once you have everything lined up nice. We're just pressing it just like the factory did. And you can even see where the teeth attempt to protrude through the back, but they don't really come through all the way. Mind you, the factory ones bent over as they got pressed in, but this works quite well. It's not coming apart. Some people actually place glue, contact some in inside. You could do that as well, but I think it works efficiently like this. Let's continue. Remove the bolts and the nuts and then press back that section. And essentially what you'll have the repressed nice and straight panel again. <laughs> and we're back. Look here, we've got the panel all cleaned up. I have the backer board installed onto the metal backing. The next step we want to do is realign all of this back where it went. As you can see from pulling the old panel off, it pretty much goes where it wants, but we want to be real precise. Reason being, the hole for the grommet, the two screw holes for the panel, and all the other peripherals that go on the panel need to line up just right or they're not gonna look right. So, easiest way to do this, we've taken off the belt line strip previously come in to where these holes are. These are the replacement ring clips for the new belt line kit. We're gonna pass those up for now. We're gonna take some stainless steel wire, cut it with a pair of tin snips, bend it over, 
and place it through the vinyl covering first. Carefully push it down. And what I do is pull them to the outside a little bit. And what this is going to do is just kind of lock this in place for now so it doesn't stretch and get out of The belt line strip we're going to install will not be impeded by these staples. These staples are actually in a different location on the reproductions than the originals, so we shouldn't have a problem there. We've checked everything for alignment to make sure that it aligns right. We're just going to set the panel like this. We're going to get some of this. We're going to open this at some point in time. Which it, oh, thank goodness, because that would have been really embarrassing had that not opened. This is just contact cement of one form or another. We're just going to lay down a bead of it. It doesn't have to be super thick. We just want it to keep the top of the vinyl from shrinking back off of the backer panel. Kind of get the sides real good. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and flip the panel back over and read here. I'm going to stretch this out, flip this back up, we're just going to smooth this out, we're going to make sure that everything's still lining up good, case in point, the material has shrunk in since it was built, and this hole has a little bit of oblong shape to it, I'm going to try to pull this back over a little bit so that whenever we put a grommet in, it completely covers the hole like that. Next step I'd like to do is where this seam comes up at, I'd like to go ahead and lay a little bit of contact cement in here. And what that's going to do is keep this material from pushing back out underneath the belt line strip once it's installed. And again, we're just trying to keep everything in place where it goes. We'll come back with a set of clips, clamp this down a little bit, let it set overnight, come back tomorrow, and all will be good. If you don't put the glue here between the staples, it's going to try to pooch out. So we really want some glue in there for that. The next step I would like to do is apply the spray adhesive, 3M, around the perimeter of the panel. That's just going to keep the panel from trying to shrink back. pull this down gently. At the same time, we're going to work this material back out on the corner so it doesn't get pinched. It will basically fall back into its factory location. Okay, next step we're going to clip all around the perimeter, let this dry overnight. We'll be back tomorrow and show you how to staple it and finish up the panel. Well, we made it through the night. I was just cleaning up the hole for the remote mirror wand. And as you can see, we are down to the final two steps of this progress. Progress? Project? Project. Cut. <laughs> the next step that we have is to finish up with the staples on the back of the panel and to put the belt line trim strip back on. So, what I figured out doing this our way is how to use standard T50 series staples. Cut them down to size to a little bit under one eighth of an inch and be able to have them work on the panel without going through the other side and puncturing your vinyl. 
Uh, they do make upholstery staples that are the right depth. I couldn't find them anywhere. I understand they're online. You have to buy them in bulk. You have to have the proper upholstery staple gun. That's a lot of work. Here's what I found. If you take a standard set of staples, you can measure it, but you can really eyeball it as well. And let's turn these over. What we're going to do is clip off. that much. We're going to turn the staples over. Mind you, you're going to have some waste here. It's not real easy to do, but it does work. Now what I've ended up with are eighth inch depth, a little bit under it's more like three thirty seconds of an inch depth. And you can take these individually, if you're careful, and place these into your staple gun here and they slide right down. You can hear them slide down. Fill it up, put you about 30 staples in here once you've cut them down. Fill up your staple gun and you're good to go. Now to show you how these work, just like any other stapler, just push it down. Here's the front. No protrusion to the back. You save a lot of money. It's easy to do. Go to any hardware store, get a standard stapler. The next step that we want to do is to apply the staples to the back of the vinyl. Now that we've stapled the perimeter of the panel, we're going to come back through, take our contact cement, and glue it just like they did from the factory back up inside and reattach this. I'm just going to kind of spooge some on here. We'll take this. What you want to make sure you do is whenever you crimp these down, there's a seam here where the original welting goes. Try to make sure that your clips stay inside this seam. If you get it out here, it's, this is more puffy and it'll end up leaving a permanent indentation there. So, this is the tricky part. The easiest way I can figure to put this on is to place the staples in the predetermined holes that they have. On this particular panel, this staple lines up with the original staple. Just so happens to line up nice. So I want to place it through that Push it down, take a pair of pliers, and bend those bad boys in. I'd like to kind of tap these so that I can mark them for where we want to drill it. Just going to try to push this through that second vinyl fabric. Kind of like using a center punch. Now I want to pull these back out. Take a very small drill bit. This takes a little finesse, but it can be done. Put your drill in reverse, push it through the first hole, line it up, and in reverse first, let it drill through the vinyl fabric so it doesn't bunch up when you turn it back the other way and drill through the steel. Nice and simple, keeps it from rolling up on the drill bit causing a big old mess. 
go into the second one, do the same thing, reverse and forward. Now we should be able to take this staple and set it into place. Easy as pie. Now that I have these drilled and the new staples are setting in place, what I want to do is bury the staples into the felt. That way you're not scratching your window glass. So what I do is take a stout set of needle nose, push these down in, come back, take a pair of pliers, both sides, and that crimps it and kind of starts it. That'll keep it in place. Then you can come back with the needle nose, and what you want to do is as you pinch it, you want to roll them like that. And now you have a completely buried, non-damaged felt strip. So as you can see, the project is done. It's actually quite simple, only takes a couple hours to do the whole thing. And uh, it's a pretty nice fit and finish. This is the type of job you can do yourself. You really don't need to have an upholstery shop do it. Uh, all of the bright work and accessories we do sell here, new and used. Appreciate you watching today. Come back and see our other videos. We are at West Coast Classic Cougar channel on YouTube. Probably where you saw this video at. I think that went pretty well. Cut. This is what the original panel would have looked like. Cut. These always curl up on the bottom for moisture. They get moldy. It's magic. Did you see that? It's magic. Wow. Cut. And has a few different variations involved with the four years. As you can see from this. Oh, shit. Really? Nice job, Don. Nice job. <laughs> Just kind of bent them back to hold this in place. So you can free see. See, it's good to meet you, Jimmy. Holy shit. I'm feeling a little cranky. <laughs>